Here's how old I am. When I was in elementary school, the teachers were allowed to spank the students. These days, when kids get in trouble, they get time out or a note sent home to their parents. If it's a Montessori school, I think they just get away with it. <laughs> but at Jefferson Elementary in the mid-80s, you got the paddle. The paddle was a big fat slab of wood with a handle on the end. It stood as a symbol of everything that was at stake when you broke the rules in my school. Most kids never even saw the paddle. They just heard it. It was legendary. And in the first grade, it was my greatest fear. The person who wielded the paddle was my teacher, Mrs. Kennedy. She was a stern, white-haired older lady with nicotine-stained teeth and the, the baggy eyes of someone who's been exhausted by a system that expects too much. She was like Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon. Retirement was right around the corner and she was just hanging on to collect that pension she'd walk through hell for. <laughs> if you broke a big rule in my school, you would get the paddle. Uh, smaller rules might get your name written on the chalkboard. Perhaps you'd miss recess. But if you broke a biggie, Mrs. Kennedy would take you out of the classroom, down the hall, around the corner to the janitor's closet where the paddle was kept on a high shelf above mop buckets, cleaning solutions, and this grimy sink that smelled somehow both clean and dirty at the same time. The janitor's closet was on the opposite side of the wall of our first grade classroom. So anytime Mrs. Kennedy would take a kid out to get paddled, as soon as they would leave the classroom, all the students would get up out of our desks, walk over to the wall, and place our ear against it, and listen for the thwack of the paddle to come down. Then we'd sprint back to our desks, giggling and laughing and waiting for the door to open, and Mrs. Kennedy to escort the crying culprit back to their seat. Yeah, around Halloween that year, I got to take a trip to the janitor's closet. <laughs> To celebrate the holiday, Mrs. Kennedy had spent her own money, proving she hadn't given up entirely, <laughs> on these little pumpkin-shaped erasers. She handed them out to all the kids in class. They were tiny and orange and shaped like a pumpkin. They'd fit on the end of your pencil so that your writing utensil was topped with a fun, festive little Halloween decoration. Uh, I was a poor kid. My family was on welfare. Most of my toys were hand-me-downs from my uncles. Uh, so even like a small gift like a pumpkin eraser meant a lot to me. The kid that sat next to me in class, his name was Joey. He had blonde hair that jutted out in every direction. He looked like Pigpen from the Peanuts cartoons. <laughs> this is before we knew anything about ADD, but I can, I can guarantee you, Joey had ADD. <laughs> this particular afternoon, uh, we were left, uh, all the students, completely unsupervised in the classroom. Like, that's a thing that teachers just used to be able to do. Just leave the students completely unattended. But back then, you could just be like, all right, kids, get out your crayons. Here's a picture of a jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna swing by the teacher's lounge for a smoke and a martini. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with the other students. We're all, you know, left to our own devices. And I notice Joey sitting next to me. He's just kind of staring off in a daze, just zoning out completely. There's a little puddle of drool forming on the desk below his chin. And he's got his pumpkin eraser in his hand and he's just absentmindedly ripping it into tiny little pieces. He doesn't even realize that he's doing it. So I whisper to him, Joey, what are you doing? You ruined your pumpkin eraser. He snaps out of it, looks down, realizes what he's done. And this entitled little jerk decides to help himself to my pumpkin eraser. <laughs> my pencil was just sitting on the corner of my desk. Joey grabs the pencil, pops the eraser off it, puts it on his pencil right in front of my face. I may just be six years old, but I know the code of the streets. <laughs> if you let somebody take what is yours, they'll be doing that for the rest of your life. Well, six-year-old Jamie was no doormat. I reached out to take my eraser back. Joey didn't want to give it back, so we're both grasping for this thing. It flies across the room. Joey slides on his stomach along the floor after it. I get up, I jump on Joey. We're wrestling in the middle of the room. All the other students form a circle around us. They're screaming and shrieking, having a great time, until all of a sudden, everybody goes quiet. The door opens. It's Mrs. Kennedy. She's back. <laughs> and she wants to know what's going on. So I looked up at her and I said, uh, Joey stole my pumpkin eraser. Certain that my lawyering skills would get me off the hook. <laughs> and she just looked down at me and said, well, why didn't you just wait until I got back and tell me? I have extra erasers, you know. Uh, no, Mrs. Kennedy, I did not know. <laughs> I didn't realize you were a millionaire. <laughs> it didn't matter who started it. She sat me down at my desk and said, you wait right here. I will deal with you next. And then she walked the green mile with Joey. <laughs> he was a dead man walking straight to that janitor's closet. 
And after they left the classroom, I got up with everybody else, walked over to the wall, placed my ear against it. We heard the paddle come down. Joey screamed. They laughed. I gasped because I knew I was next. The paddle wasn't just about pain. It was about shame. It was about humiliation. And I wanted no part of it. So on my way to the janitor's closet, I came up with a plan. I would remembered a time earlier in the year, I'd been spending the night at a friend's house, and my friend's mom threatened to spank me when I refused to eat her weird macaroni salad. It had raisins. What are you going to do? I told my mom what happened, and she gave me some choice words. I should tell that lady if she ever threatened me again. And I remembered them as I entered that janitor's closet. So dark, so ominous. Just me and my fully grown adult teacher alone together in a closet as she told me to bend over. How is this a thing that used to be okay? Well, as she reached on that high shelf for the paddle, I looked up at her and I said, Mrs. Kennedy, my mother told me that if you touch me with that thing, she will sue you for every penny you've got. Here's the thing, that was a total bluff. All right, we were not about to sue. We were on welfare. My mom didn't even know a lawyer except for maybe a court-appointed one. But Mrs. Kennedy didn't have the energy for that kind of a fight left in her. She sighed audibly, her shoulders slumped. And just to save face, she said, well, Jamie, I'll be giving your mother a call tonight. We will revisit this tomorrow. But there was no phone call. I mean, if a kid has both the knowledge and the audacity to say something like that to an adult, do you even want to deal with the parents who taught them to speak those words to begin with? No. It was not worth the hassle. So a minute later, I returned to the classroom, and the laughter of my fellow students quickly turned to shocked silence when they realized my cheeks were completely dry. I was the first kid in the history of that first grade class to return from the janitor's closet without tears streaming down my face. I was an instant legend. And on my way back to the seat, I noticed something on the ground. And I bent down and picked up my pumpkin eraser. <laughs> <laughs>